NVMe SSDs can use a significant amount of power, and therefore can become quite hot if not properly cooled. I have seen some M.2 NVMe SSDs thermally throttle themselves, even sometimes with a heatsink installed. So I wanted to find out what is the best M.2 SSD heatsink design. So, I purchased 15 different heatsinks from Amazon to put them to the test. The test setup included a 2TB Samsung 980 Pro SSD, Asus ROG Strix B550F gaming motherboard, AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU, a Noctua NHP1 cooler, and a passively cooled NVIDIA GT 1030 GPU. I chose the Samsung 980 Pro SSD because it is the drive that I've seen most often throttle when not properly cooled, so I was sure that I could get some high temperatures from it. Passmark's hard drive benchmark was performed twice in a row, with a long duration setting to stress the SSD for about 8 minutes with each heatsink in place. Hardware Info 64 was used to track temperatures. The 980 Pro has two temperature sensors. One is on the flash memory, and one is on the SSD controller. I decided to use the average of these two temperatures for this comparison. Unfortunately, the temperature measurements only updated every few minutes, so there are three temperature measurements for each run. One before the stress test began, one toward the end of the first stress test, and one toward the end of the second stress test. I will quickly display the results here before going through each one individually. The legend on the right is in order from hottest at the top to coolest at the bottom. The bare drive was the only one to see any thermal throttling during the test, and most of the heat sinks were within about 12 degrees of each other. The best performer though was significantly better than any of the others, although the test may not have been very fair, which I will describe later. Starting off with the bare drive, it was about 20 degrees higher than even the worst performing heatsink. Using the ASUS motherboard's stock heatsink, the SSD was a little warmer before the test began, but by the end of the two tests it was right in the middle of the pack. Good news for ASUS. The B550F's M.2 heatsink performed about as well as the average aftermarket heatsink. Copper has a higher thermal conductivity. How does it perform? It was one of the hottest of the pack under load. I suppose this is good evidence that indeed, copper may conduct heat better than aluminum, but it doesn't radiate heat any better than aluminum. Next up is an interesting one. The Shinshi's heatsink has a heat pipe that transfers heat to a separate fin stack. This one actually did the best, by far. Okay, but do you remember how I mentioned that this test may not have been very fair? For the Shinshi's heatsink to fit properly with its fin stack, I had to move the graphics card down a few spaces. This provided more cool air to the heatsink and undoubtedly helped it achieve the lowest temperatures. That said, this heatsink performed well enough that I am confident that it would still have been the winner here, even if I tested all the other heatsinks with the graphics card in the lower PCIe slot. Moving on, Silverstone makes a uniquely designed M.2 heatsink. Unfortunately, it was toward the higher end of the pack, in 12th place out of 17. Thermal Grizzly makes a very simple heatsink. It did not do so well either, and performed almost identically to the copper heatsink. Be Quiet makes a somewhat larger M.2 heatsink. It did very well, ending up in 4th place. Ilutang sells a pack of two differently designed heatsinks on Amazon. This one uses screws to hold it in place and is somewhat larger than the other. It was slightly worse than average. The second Ilutang heatsink is much smaller and uses two rubber bands to hold it in place. This one did very poorly, by far the worst of the 16 heatsinks tested. What's next? EK makes an M.2 heatsink in a variety of colors. It did not do so well though, falling between the Thermal Grizzly and Silverstone heatsinks towards the hotter end of options. Taiwanese brand Arc Gone 
sells a very bulky heatsink with a unique four screw mounting mechanism. And this one did very well. It actually did the best of all heatsinks that fit with the graphics card in the top slot. So Arc Gone is one of the winners here. John's bow has a unique design, and it comes out ahead of most in fifth place. Thermal Right has three heatsinks here. The first is a somewhat larger design than most, and it ends up just above the John's bow option in sixth place. What if we add LEDs to the heatsink? Eh, it looks like LEDs don't help thermally. This one is in 11th place. The Thermalright M.2 Pro has a heat pipe through the middle of it. Does that help? Nope, it doesn't look like the heat pipe helps. This one is a few degrees hotter than the one with no heat pipe. Sabrent makes the most expensive heatsink here. How does it do? It's a little disappointing, right in the middle toward the end of the stress tests. I can't explain the higher initial temperature here, and it is likely some kind of error. Too bad I don't still have the test set up here to do a retest. Finally, Sabrent also makes a PCIe adapter card that also includes a heatsink. This is the second test that I had to do with the graphics card in a lower PCIe slot. It ends up in second place, just below most of the other heatsinks. I don't know how much of this can be attributed to the heatsink itself, its position further away from the motherboard, or the graphics card being further away, but regardless, it seems to do quite well. So what did I learn here? The two top performers were tested with the graphics card further down on the motherboard, so providing more air around the heatsink, especially in a fanless setup, seems to be beneficial. Try not to position the SSD too close to another source of heat such as a graphics card or Southbridge motherboard chipset, for example. I wish I tested all of the heatsinks with the graphics card in the lower position, but I didn't, and it would take too much time for me to go back and repeat all of these tests. The larger heatsinks seemed to do better, which is not surprising. The one heatsink that actually had a heat pipe to direct heat away to a separate fin stack actually did the best, Although if a heat pipe is simply embedded in the heatsink like it is with the Thermalright Pro, it didn't seem to help at all. The one copper heatsink did not do so well here, so we might want to stick with aluminum. I learned that adding LEDs proved very beneficial for SSD temperatures, and that the more popular the brand name, the better the heatsink performs. Lastly, the motherboard's stock heatsink was right in the middle of the pack. So unless you are going for the lowest SSD temperature possible, if your motherboard includes an M.2 heatsink, don't be afraid to use it over an aftermarket option. To get photos and test results of every one of my PC builds, check out my Patreon page. Like this video and subscribe for more fanless PC content, and visit FullySilentPCs.com if you are interested in purchasing your own custom-built fanless PC.